Bon. Donc nous allons passer donc euh, à la présentation suivante, qui est donc celle de Mathias, Mathias Schindler, qui va nous parler donc des, de la collaboration qui a été faite entre Wikimedia Allemagne et les archives, euh, les archives fédérales d'Allemagne. Voilà, donc le temps de, de s'installer très rapidement. So before I start with the actual presentation, I would like to um, to demonstrate a bit why this is about, or why we are so concerned with and, and dealing with images all the time. This is an image you might recognize. Uh, it's one of the the French um, pr pr state presidents. Um, And um, this is actually the image used in Wikipedia as of now um, to illustrate him. There are many more images, but this is the, 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 the first image shown in the article. And you might consider it a bit odd because the angle is strange and there are people be standing behind him and you might be asking, why are we using this image and not something else? And the, the answer is, well, there isn't much else Uh, showing him, and actually this is not an image showing him, but it's an image showing him and another president, because this image was made by um, a soldier from the uh, United States um, Army Press Corps on a commemora commemora commemoration day um, on Omaha Beach um, um, uh, decades after um, the landing. And the reason for taking this image is, is this image is from day one in the public domain. It is not co um, protected by copyright, so people like Wikipedians are free to use it. Um, so whenever there is a politician uh, we need an image of, we usually pray that he goes to a visit to the United States, um, because in this case uh, a picture will be made and we can use it. Every time a French politician goes to the United States, we get a picture of him. Every time an American politician comes to France, we don't get an image um, of him. So um, it's, it's pointless for American politicians to come to France, at least from, from, <laughs> from, this, from this perspective. Um, the second country um, doing this right now is Brazil, um, and they have started to release images under um, free uh, creative, comic, uh, creative Commons licenses, so we can use um, these images as well. And um, when there was this huge and, and finally successful rescue operation um, uh, of 22 miners in, in Chile, um, these images were released under a free creative, copyright, a free creative Commons license as well. So Wikipedia was um, in the same position to ju not just write articles about the rescued miners, but also to show them um, at the moment they were rescued. Um, and, and of course, there's the image, and this is the original image, and then there is the copyright information saying, well, um, who actually made this is a um, James Cavalier. Thank you for doing your job, and thank you for um, living in a country where copyright isn't as bad. And I can say this, and this is harsh words, because copyright in Germany isn't much better, uh, and we have to find ways of fixing it. And one way of fixing it is talking to cultural institutions and talking about the implications of free licenses and to, um, to convince them to do something while at the same time we are trying to fix copyright as well. If you have any questions um, regarding the presentation, the talk, to me personally, you can use Twitter because of the time constraints afterwards. Uh, write to me, use the, uh, the ad symbol to address it directly to me, use the hashtag, um, and we can uh, answer these questions, um, not just at the end of the conversation, but for the whole conversation, uh, for the whole uh, event here. My name is Matthias Schindler. I'm a Wikipedian. And, um, in 2009, I started working for Wikimedia Germany. Um, my job is to maintain and build content partnerships with cultural institutions, that is you. Um, and the, the, the case study I'm going to present is the General Federal Archive. It's a state agency. It's operating under a legal mandate. Um, they are using the legal deposit law um, for receiving images um, and mostly uh, files, archives, uh, archive stuff, um, anything that is created by um, state administration. 
and their image archive has about 10 million images. Uh, a smaller part is already in a digital form available, and a smaller part of this one is available on their own website, which was started in 2007, and which prompted us to, um, to start a dialogue. The negotiations took 12 months, and every day was worth it um, to, to come up to an agreement that was acceptable to the Wikimedians, acceptable to the, um, the Federal Archive. Um, and the critical points where negotiation took really long and was, uh, had to, to go to many rounds was the actual license of, um, of content. The Creative Commons license, it's a, it's a bouquet, it's a, it's a set of um, options you can choose from, and one option is, for example, disallowing the commercial usage. This is an option um, you may pick privately, but it's not an option we can accept because content on Wikipedia has to be available for commercial usage as well. So we had a long round of discussion to come up with a license that uh, didn't include uh, commercial license restriction. And of course, what you need is um, the lack of any kind of time, of time and, and space constraints. So uh, the content had to be usable by anyone everywhere in the world. A license restricted to people living in Germany would not be ac acceptable. And of course, in order to do so, the organization itself has to have the right uh, for allowing this kind of usage. So out of these 10 million images, not every image qualified as being acceptable for um, being released under a free license because the, um, the Federal Archive had to have, uh, have, had to have the, the actual rights um, to make it available to us. The agreement <laughs> contained the release of 100,000 images under a free license. We, took, uh, we chose um, Creative Commons CCBYSA. BY means attribution. You have to um, give attribution to the source and share alike. That means if you modify the image, it has to be released under the same license um, conditions as well. The downside we finally agreed on was that the image size was reduced. So we didn't get the full high resolution image. We got um, something slightly above thumbnail size, 800 pixels, which is acceptable in some web usage cases and in many cases completely unusable. Um, we settled down to 800 pixels after basically negotiating one pixel after another. Um, um, me personally, I won't do it again this way. Uh, the, the next negotiation will be slightly different. Um, but in this case, um, we found that 800 pixel was acceptable to, um, to be used in Wikipedia uh, for, for certain purposes. And the, the agreement consists of a collaboration or cooperation regarding the improvement of authority files something that the Federal Archive always wanted to do, but never had the, the capacities to do, this, um, to do this on their own. So um, they took advantage of the, the huge amount of volunteers at Wikipedia that were able to properly identify people, to link um, record data um, to the archive, to Wikipedia, and to the German National Library. And of course, there was an agreement that if we find any kind of mistakes, um, we're going to report them. Authority file matching is creating one of the uh, single most powerful tools to, to link um, between the borders of one single individual cultural institutions. Once you have built up um, an authority file, you can properly, for example, identify actual people. So if there are two people sharing the same name, you can identify them, you can differentiate them. If people have changed their names, um, if people have um, been identified in countries where the national language has an, a different alphabet using um, uh, Cyrillic, um, 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 Greek or, or um, Arabic letters, you can still identify the same person. And once you have this kind of identifier, you can cross borders, in this case, literally. There is a, a project called VIAF. It's a, um, a research project from OCLC, um, and it's um, a cooperation between many large um, uh, national libraries. And once you have one identifier, it's easy for you to go to 
the French National Library and to get all the, um, the books about or by a person that are identified by this identifier without having to um, understand the structure, the data structure of the individual um, uh, library. This is the, the one single slide that usually makes every librarian gasp and, and uh, suddenly wake up because this shows how fast Wikipedians were able to match up to 60,000 um, records in just five months. Um, this is volunteer time, volunteer effort, well spent. It is an extremely powerful tool we built as well, but um, actually going to 100% um, of, of the names being identified uh, and with a high success rate um, was, was something really important for us. The images you can look up at Wikipedia himself. Um, I took some images. Uh, these are not even the, 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 the best ones, but they show politics after World War One, uh, World War Two. They show image from the other Germany, from the uh, German Demo Democratic Republic. Um, and they show, of course, the time before and in, um, during World War II. Uh, in this case, there are some uh, France-related images shown uh, and, and now released under a free license. And, of course, the application doesn't stop with topics that are just related to France or just related to the National Archive. They are applicable all over the place. This is example, an example of this article about um, a pawn shop. Um, and they are using an image from a, from a Berlin pawn shop in 1927-26, I think. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely image. You can see it in, in 800 pixels. Um, it's even better. All these small boxes where people left their stuff uh, in exchange for, um, for money, it's, it's a perfect illustration um, for this article. Description matters because we didn't just get the image, we got the description file, we got the information supplied by the Federal Archive, and people were able to, to add additional value to it. And this value, for example, was um, completely um, giving, giving information that the information uh, on the original description was wrong. It was um, at a different place, still in Paris, but, um, but the, um, the location was different. And there is an exchange of... Um, of additional information between the Federal Archive and um, Wikipedians. And it's now almost two years after this collaboration started, and there are still reports coming in, people identifying images that are outdated, that are, that are, where the information is missing, some crucial information, where the image has an issue, where something can be improved. And this is the most amazing part. We didn't expect the sheer volume of feedback coming in from the public, from um, uh, from, from all over the world, basically. Um, people from Poland, people from South America coming in and reporting that specific images um, can be described better, that there, are, there is evidence on the images that could lead to a proper and, and, and more precise um, description. This is the image, the, um, this is the chart where which the, um, the Federal Archive is distributing themselves. This shows the increase in traffic. And the peak in December 1998, uh, eight, 2008 isn't the, the important thing. That's one peak. But it's the, the study that it's the plateau reached after the next month and the months after that. So they basically tripled the traffic on their website over a long time, ignoring this one single effect in December. And um, there are numbers on our side as well. This is um, a more recent number. This number 90,893,000 uh, This number is the amount of pages visited in October 2010 that contained images from the German Federal Archive. In, in every language edition um, added together. And this is not just a single instance. Um, these are two months before. They are in the same region. And these are extremely, well, they are not high by, by Wikipedia standard, but they are high by the standard of um, images from a culture institution being shown 
being embedded into context, um, helping to enrich the article and to, to get, create a better understanding about a certain topic. And you can look up that URL, it's quite important. Um, basically, every URL that starts with toolserver.org slash Magnus um, is usually leading to a very powerful tool to, to make use of Wikipedia data. Magnus Manske, he wrote the first version of the, um, the MediaWiki software. Um, so whenever he's around, it's almost a guaranteed um, high powerful, powerful tool um, to disseminate and then to understand Wikipedia. This cooperation, this partnership has to a certain extent be, been a victim of its um, own success um, because of this increase in traffic, this increase in requests to the Federal Archive with no additional staff um, available to the institution. The Federal Archive has recently said that right now they are unable to make more images available because they can't handle the load. They would love to, but they, they simply can't because um, additional revenue coming to the archive is basically given to the treasury instantly. It doesn't remain at the culture institution. This is what I consider a bug in um, the method of operating for this cultural institution because they should benefit from successful op uh, partnerships. They shouldn't be punished for successful partnerships. So whenever you are working in the cultural institutions, make sure that success successful partnerships um, benefit um, your institution as well as the public. And of course, there are licensing issues. People outside Wikimedia Commons are um, sometimes reluctant, reluctant to, um, to, to comply to the license terms. That's something we can't actively prevent, but we could do better in um, telling people how to use Creative Commons licensed image in a proper way. And there are policy recommendations. Um, we favor the public domain concept for for state uh, material, but in the meantime, we are able to work with cultural institutions to make this content available to the public under free license terms. Um, CCBYSA is acceptable. Image restriction, uh, image sites restriction is something we advocate anyone to avoid because it doesn't, um, it doesn't help. It's, it's, it's just, it, 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 it's, it's pointless to reduce the image size. Uh, you can go to the full resolution and, and more and more cultural institutions are willing to, to go this additional small step. And of course, if you have uh, metadata description files, you can release them without, without um, the images to help building up these connections between Wikipedia articles, between library um, entrance and all this stuff. And that's my last slide. I thank you. And if there are any questions, you can use um, Twitter or the microphone. Thank you. Hi, Matthias. On your slide, victim of its success, you indicated... <laughs> <laughs> Hi. You indicated uh, additional revenue streams uh, for the institution. Could you be please more specific about the, the, the sources? Right. Um, while the Federal Archive has released the images under a free license, they are still able to, um, to license uh, then these images under different terms for anyone who's not willing to use the Creative Commons license or to use or if someone wants the higher resolution images as well. Um, so in theory this is a business model. This is a business model for anyone who has uh, full rights of usage, could release some images and of course could make a available a portion of these images and then um, build up revenue streams for goods and services. What they could do as well would be, for example, to, to offer people um, to not just buy the images in a digital format, but to, to buy a high quality printout, because usually people don't have these tools at home, the, the high quality uh, printers are uh, required. So they would be able to, to, um, to build up um, business models. And, and in this case, the, the licensing revenue from non-Creative Commons licensed stuff on their site, it increased as well. But they don't fully profit from, from their own success from the increase in revenue because additional revenue is going directly to the federal budget. And only in the longer term, politicians will remember these successful projects and then to consider additional funding for cultural institutions. But this is a long-term perspective and 
usually it requires the public to, to scream out loud. Uh, we're living in a time where 100 million, or 100, I'm sorry, 100 billion for banks is made available. Uh, it should be made possible to, to just reflect or, and to, 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 to take one or two billion to these cultural institutions. Who am Thank I? you.